Hello everyone and welcome to the ENA exam review number one in spring 2023. Um, so yeah, in this one, I'm just gonna go over the basics, which is like a review. So we're gonna go over voltage, current, resistance, and power. And then we're gonna review um, Kirchhoff's laws. And then after that, we're gonna do a bunch of problems on resistor networks. So first we're gonna derive the equations for the voltage divider and current divider. And then we're gonna go over a bunch of different techniques to solve uh, resistor networks. All right, so let's get started. Just to review the basics. So voltage is the electrical tension or pressure that pushes the current through the circuit. So the most basic form of voltage in our circuits is just a, a dependent voltage source, which means the current flowing through this voltage source does not affect the voltage across it at all. So no matter the current flowing through this voltage source, the voltage V will always stay the same. But that's not the case for dependent sources. So there's two kinds. The first kind would be a voltage controlled voltage source, which means the voltage V is multiplied by another voltage VX, which is a voltage drop somewhere else on the circuit. So this voltage drop somewhere else in the circuit will uh, depend or change this voltage V depending on the value of Vx. So that's a voltage controlled voltage source. It's a function of Vx. V is a function of Vx. So the other kind is a voltage controlled, or sorry, current controlled voltage source, which means the current flowing through it, I, controls, I'll call this Ix, and this will be uh, Vx. And then that means the current Ix flowing through here multiplies the voltage across it. So depending on the current flowing through this uh, voltage source, will change the uh, voltage across it. So it's a function of Ix. This is a current controlled voltage source. So likewise for current, um, so current is the amount of charge that's flowing through a conductor like a wire. So just like the voltage sources, we also have current sources, which just push out a current I, regardless of the voltage across it. So regardless of the voltage across it for the dependent current source, the current will always stay the same. And just like controlled voltage sources, there are controlled current sources. So I'll start with the uh, voltage controlled current source, which depends, or it's a function of Vx. The current changes depending on the voltage across it, which is Vx. So this is a voltage controlled current source. And then the other kind would be a current controlled current source, which means the current flowing through this current source changes how much current is flowing in the source. So for this one, it's a function of Ix and it's a current controlled current source. Nice. So next, just resistance, which is the opposition of the flow of current and where that current goes the, um, the, the that's lost it's energy that's dissipated through heat so it becomes heat so we use resistors to limit the amount of current flowing in a like piece of wire and we all know if currents flowing through a resistor then there's a voltage across it or vice versa it's all related through ohm's law which is v equals i r and so next power, so the state equation is just P equals I times V, but then we can also substitute for voltage or current using Ohm's law. So that means P could be either V squared over R, or P is equal to I squared R. And then you would use these two equations with R, the ones with R in it, when you know um, you have like a specific load that's dissipating heat, such as a resistor. All right, on to the next, we're talking about Kirchhoff's laws. 
So the first one is Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states that the sum of voltages in a closed loop equals zero. So in this circuit here, it's in a closed loop, so current's gonna flow in this direction out the positive terminal. And then through the, across these four resistors, there's gonna be four different voltage drops. So the KVL states that the voltage source is equal to the sum of the voltage drops across each resistor individually. So that means v, the voltage source V equals VR, the voltage across R1 plus the voltage across R2 and so on. And then the KCL says that the current flowing into a node, sorry, the KCL states that the current flowing into a node equals a current flowing out of the node. So let's just say, for example, we have three currents flowing into a node. I1, let's say this is I2, and this is I3. So since in this node right here, was similar by this dot, each of these three currents is flowing into the node. So I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to current flowing out, which is in this diagram, I drew no currents flowing out, so it's zero. That's Kirchhoff's current law. So we're gonna use these two laws to derive the equations for the voltage divider and current divider. So for the voltage divider, uh, knowing that these resistors and voltage source connected in series, the current flowing the circuit I is gonna stay the same. So when I write the KVL, the KVL, uh, KVL, that's gonna say VN is equal to the voltage drop across each of these two resistors added up. V1, or VR1 plus VR2. And then notice that the current is staying the same so we want to write these two voltages across the resistor in terms of current. So we have the current I times R1 plus I times R2. That's just using Ohm's law. And see, we can factor out the current I. I'll just factor out like this. That means I is times the quantity R1 plus R2. And then now the trick is I need to solve for the current I which is gonna be Vn divided by R1 plus R2. And notice that when I take this I1 and multiply it by each of these two resistors, I'll get its voltage across it in reference to this point I just put here. So notice when I multiply this I, which is staying the same because it's in a series circuit, this I times R1 is exactly the voltage across R1. So let's go ahead and replace that. That means VR1. Well, I also have to multiply this side by R1. This is gonna be R1 over R1 plus R2 times Vn. And so this is basically the general equation for a voltage divider. It just states that uh, the voltage drop across a particular resistor in this voltage divider is equal to that resistor value divided by the sum of n or how many depends how many resistors you have it could be 10 times vn so yeah that's a general equation for a voltage divider and very similarly for a current divider this one instead we're going to write a kvl or sorry kcl so this is going to be i1 should say this is I2 and then this is I3. So I1 is just IN. So I'll write the KCL, which is going to be IN is equal to I2 plus I3. I2 plus I3. And now, just like the voltage divider, I need to write these two currents, I2 and I3, in terms of voltages. So I n is gonna be using the fact that this is a parallel connection. So at this node, the voltage reference to ground is staying the same in the circuit throughout. 
So that voltage is also going to be dropped across here, the same voltage, reference to ground. So it's going to be V over R1 using Ohm's law plus V over R2. Then I'll factor out a V. So I n is going to be V times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And so we can use the fact that 1 over R is also called the conductance, which is usually denoted by G. So for R1, I'll replace with uh, 1 over R1 and replace with G1, and then 1 over R2 is going to be G2. So I n is equal to V times G1 plus G2. And then now I'm going to solve for V. Do that little trick. So V is going to be I n over G1 plus G2. And then notice that when I divide by a particular resistor, then I'll get the current that's flowing in that branch. So this would exactly be I2. So I2 is going to be equal to, so I'm dividing this thing by R1, which means I'm multiplying by G. So it's going to be G1 over G1 plus G2 times the input current. And this is the general equation for a current divider using the fact that G is 1 over R. It's very similar to the voltage divider, except we're working with uh, conductances. Next, we're going to go over nodal analysis. So now we're entering um, some of the basic techniques to solve resistor networks. So nodal analysis, the basis of it is KCL. So what you're trying to do in nodal analysis is you're trying to find voltages across uh, nodes. So you, you want to find out what are these node voltages. Because once you know the node voltages, you can find the current flowing in that particular branch. You'll just do V divided by R, because R always stays constant. So when you write your equations using KCL, the number of unknown nodes you have will be the number of equations you need to solve. It's going to become a linear system of equations. So you're going to have uh, N unknown nodes, which gives you N equations. So how to set it up is, I noticed that this is a node because current will flow here, which I'll call I1. It could flow this way, which I'll call I2. Oh, sorry. I2, and it could flow this way, which is I3. Or rather, I'll label, I'll label the resistors a little weird, so I'll change this to I3 and the other one to I2. Oh, just to stay consistent. So this is I3, and this is I2. So writing a KCL, current flowing in is current flowing out, so that means I1 plus I2, these are two currents flowing into the node and flowing out of the node, that means equals I3. And then what do you need to do after, so this is the KCL, which is this equation. Now you need to write these currents in terms of voltage. So you can use, introduce R into the equations. So I1 is gonna be what you're gonna do with this. Let's just say this is V plus, this is V minus, this is just for R1. So the voltage across R1 is going to be V plus minus V minus divided by R1. So it's V plus minus V minus divided by R1. And that's exactly I1. Using the same logic, um, I, uh, I2, so I'll just keep these, here, it'd be easier if I did this. I'll just label these node voltages like V1, V2, and V3. So let's say this one on the left is V1, this middle one's V2, and this right one is V3. So I just need to rewrite this. So it's V1 minus V2 over R1. And how I know how to subtract it in this order is because I'm looking at the direction of the current. Since the current is flowing from left to right, I go from left to right on the node voltages. So it's V1 minus V2. From left to right and then divide by r so that means i2 is going to be v2 minus zero because this point in the circuit is ground so that's v2 minus zero divided by r oh sorry that's the wrong one 
I was looking at the middle one. I2 is on the right. Sorry about that. So for I2, it's going to be... Yeah, sorry about that. I2 is this current right here. So it's going to be V3 minus V2 divided by R2. And that's I2. And then I3 would be this current flowing down here from V2 to ground. So that means it's V2 minus 0 divided by R3 is equal to I3. And so that's how you do NOLA analysis. So in this case, um, we have one unknown node, so we're going to have one equation. So it's just going to be these three summed together. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So this one, we needed to use NOLA analysis to find the current I0 in this circuit. So we'll go ahead and redraw this or just make it bigger. Like this. Then we can just get rid of this. So we need to find I0. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> sorry. So in this circuit, first thing we need to do is pick a place of reference, which is our voltage reference or ground. So I'll just pick it here, usually pick it at the bottom. And then we need to label our nodes. So current can split there, it can split here, and it can split here. I'll call this one VA. This one here, VB, and this one, VC. All right, now we have our nodes label. I can draw some currents. So let's just call this one here, I1, and say this one's I2. And then we have I0 labeled for us. That's what we're going to solve for. Let's say this one's I3. So we have three nodes, so we're going to have three equations. But first thing we should notice is that this node here, VA, is exactly 60 volts. Because this source, the plus, is connected to this node, so it's going to be 60 minus 0, so it is 60 volts dropped on that node. So VA is going to be 60 volts, and that's going to be equation, sorry, that's equation number 1. It's like a given, like a little gift. <laughs> that's very nice. So now... I need to look at these two nodes, VC and VB. I'll go ahead and start with VB. So I need to write the KCL at the node VB, which is just current going in equals current going out. So at VB, there's just three currents going in and zero currents going out. So it's going to be I1 plus I2 plus this current source, 3I0, dependent current source equals zero. And then rewriting these in terms of voltages, I1 is going to be VA minus VB. I should probably replace VA with 60. That'll make things easier. VA is 60. This is divided by 10. And that's I1. And then I2 is going to be VC minus VB divided by 2. VC minus VB all divide by 2. Then the last current, 3I0, is going to be the number 3 multiplied by I0, which is VA minus VC divided by 4. VA is 60 minus VC over 4. And this is all going to equal 0. This is equation number 2. And then for our last equation, I need to write the KCL at VC. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the KCL at VC, which is going to be I0, because that's flowing in, equals current flowing out, which is I2 plus I3. So I0 is the current flowing in, equals current flowing out, I2 plus I3. And then rewriting these equations, I0 is 3 times 60 minus VC over 4 equals I2, which is VC minus VB, over 2. Then the last one, I3, is going to be VC minus 0, because that's reference, VC minus 0, divided by 8. 
divided by 8. And this is equation number 3. So I have the system of equations, three equations. One of them was given. So I'm going to look at equation number 2 and number 3. I noticed that it's exactly two equations and two unknowns. My two unknowns are VC and VB. And so you can either solve this however you'd like, you know, MATLAB, you could use like back substitution and all that. But that now that um, these equations are written, it's no longer a circuit problem. This is just an algebra problem. So I'm not going to spend any time on those because it's just like, you know, it's just really tedious because we all systems, you want to solve systems, you know, you can solve however you want, you know, matrix, TI inspired. But anyway, the problem wanted I zero, which is just 60 minus VC over four. So when you solve these, uh, these two systems of equations, you'll get the value VC. So you just plug that in here and then you'll have the current I zero. And that's how you solve this circuit. <clears throat> and so next, the other method is mesh analysis. So for mesh analysis, the basis of it is now the Kirchhoff's voltage law. And instead, the number of meshes will be the number of equations you have. So it's going to be another linear system of equations. What I mean by mesh is it's a loop that does not depend on or not um, interact with any other loops. And so what you're trying to do in mesh analysis is you're trying to solve for the branch currents or the currents flowing in these meshes, the mesh current. So, oops, I put I2, O2, I2, sorry, this is I1. So what you're doing in mesh analysis is you're writing instead a KVL like this. So how you do, how you write these equations is you write a KVL. So with this KVL, I see for I1, it's going to be the voltage drop across plus or the voltage drop across the first resistor plus the voltage drop across the second resistor equals zero. And then you write them in terms of currents. So mesh I1. So VR1 is going to be R1 times I1 plus, because I'm going into this plus sign, plus. So the trick with um, neighboring uh, branches is you're supposed to subtract the mesh current from the neighboring uh, mesh because you don't want that current. You want the current from the mesh you're focused on right now. So you need to subtract the one that you're not looking at. So that's going to be I1, which is the mesh I'm working with, minus I2, which is a current I need to subtract because it's neighboring. Because how to look at it is you have this branch and then you have I1 going this way and then I2 is going this way. So if I want I1, I need to take I1 and subtract it, or sorry, I2. I need to take I1 and then subtract it from I2 and that'll give me I1. And this is gonna be multiplied by the resistance equals zero. Then mesh two, likewise, will just be R th the um, voltage drop R3. It's gonna be I2, uh, oh, sorry, no, wrong. It's supposed to be R2. Or R3, sorry. R3 times I2 minus I1. That's this voltage drop across here. Plus VR2, which is just R2, I2 equals zero. So yeah, this is the basis of mesh analysis. So let's go ahead and look at an example for mesh analysis. So we need to find V0 in the circuit below using mesh analysis. So let's go ahead and make this bigger. There we go. Let's get rid of this and make this big. There you go. So do you, uh, here, let me go ahead and do this. Sorry. Got me really big. There you go. So we need to solve for V0 using mesh analysis. So I'm going to draw my three mesh currents. Let's say this is I1. Let's say this current's I2. Let's say this one is I3. So I'll first write the KVL at I1 or mesh I1. So that's going to be following this arrow. I go into the negative of the voltage source. So I need a negative 20 volts 
And I'm gonna go ahead and just draw some polarities across these resistors like this. As so. You just need to follow the polarities of the resistor. Good, so I get a negative 20. I'm going into the plus two times I1. There's no neighboring mesh. And then plus um, that resistor one times the current I'm working with minus that other mesh current, which is I3. And then I need this last voltage drop, which is gonna be plus two I1 minus I2 equals zero. So that's equation number one. So second equation, I'm gonna write the KVL for I2. So KVL at mesh I2. I'll just start from this point right here. So I get a negative two times I2 minus I1. I'm just starting at this point down here and going up. And then I get a plus four times I2 minus 10 equals zero. That's gonna be equation number two. And then equation number three, I write the KVL at I3. And the thing about I3, we should notice that there's a current source here. And remember that this is, or so specifically this is a dependent current source. So that means in this mesh here, the current I3 is simply given, it's five amps flowing in that mesh. So with this five amps, I can go ahead with anywhere else in this uh, system of equations, I can replace I3 with five. Replace I3 with five. So there's five, I3 there, which simplifies our uh, equations. So notice that we have three equations and some unknowns. We had three unknowns, but one of them is given. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. This is equation number three. So the unknowns would be I1 and I2. And what you're gonna do with I1 and I2 using mesh analysis is we notice that V0 is gonna be I times R. So depending how you're looking at it, um, the current flowing in this um, branch is gonna be I1 minus I2 times two. And that should be the voltage drop across this resistor. It's gonna be V0, this is ground. Or in other words, there yeah, it's just V0. Oh, sorry. The current specifically flowing in that branch, you have to write a KCL. So yeah, I guess in this problem, there's like a little extra step you have to do. So we notice that, I'll just call it I0. That I0 is going to be V0, I need to put it ground here, minus 0, divided by 2. So I0 is going to be V0 over 2. And then I0, depending on your perspective of it, will be either... Oh yeah, it doesn't really matter. It, it it's like it's like a neighboring mesh, so it could be either I one minus I two or like vice versa. Just depending, you just have to stay consistent with your arrows. But yeah, once you solve your system of equations, you just need to plug it in to this right here, and then that should be the uh, voltage V zero. All right, next we will be. The Thevenin's and Norton's theorems, I think. Let's see. Yes, it is. So Thevenin's and Norton's theorems, or it's just one theorem, it's just or two individual theorems. It states that any resistive network can be simplified into these two very simple circuits. So there are a couple constraints. There, there's three of them. So the three constraints are the networks can only contain dependent voltage and current sources and resistors. That means using these theorems, you can simplify these two really complicated circuits into these two forms, which are very simple to deal with. So the Thevenin equivalent would be a 
uh, voltage source in series with the resistor, and then the Norin equivalent is a current source in parallel with the resistor. And how you calculate these um, values, the feminine voltage will just be the voltage, if you see this black box, seen from the circuit itself. So what you need to do is you basically need to uh, zero all your sources to find this uh, this um, resistor. So in this case, they have it written as RTH and RNO. Well, they're going to be the same value. It's just the equivalent resistance. And then the Thevenin voltage and the Norton current are calculated using by zeroing the sources in these two circuits. And then you solve it via that. You have to like add them uh, algebraically, knowing that current sources add up in parallel and voltage sources add up in series. And then it can greatly simplify the circuits into these two forms. So that's Thevenin's and Norton's theorems. And then source transformation would be the process of transferring or transfer um, going between these two types of circuits. So remember, the Thevenin equivalent looks something like this. It looked like this, or that's the Thevenin voltage, and this is the equivalent resistance. And then we want to go between this and this, the Norton equivalent which this is I and O. Then we have RTH. Oh, sorry, it's supposed to be in parallel, sorry. Like this. It's connected across it. And then we have the output seen here. Let's just say it's V out. This is R E Q. And so, we wish to transfer between these two circuits. So how you do that would just be Ohm's law, which is very nice. It says VTH is equal to REQ times I and O. So that's how you solve for the Thevenin voltage, or in other words, the Norton current is going to be VTH over REQ. So these two equations are the ones you would use to transfer between these two circuits called source transformation. It's a really powerful tool, tool to solve um, resistive networks. Another powerful tool would be the superposition theorem, which basically states that the sum, I know this gets sound really confusing, well, I'll explain it. It's the sum of the like individual outputs evaluated at its inputs individually is also equal to the sum of the inputs by itself, and then you evaluate it at the output. What I mean by that is, in a system, you could either have f of, let's just say, you have an input x plus one, you have another input x plus two, uh, and then f of x plus three. So x1, x2, and x3 are inputs, and then they're all evaluated at your function f, which is your output. Well, you could either do it like this, where you can uh, evaluate each input individually and then sum them up, or in a linear system, you could either evaluate each input individually, like this, and then evaluate it at your function. So the superposition principle states that these two quantities have to be equal to each other. You could either do it, you can do it either way. So how this works in circuits is in a circuit, if you have voltage sources and current sources, two different kinds of inputs, you could either solve the circuit just as a whole, considering both sources, or you could zero one of the sources, then solve it, and then uh, zero the other source, and then solve it again using just that source, and then you add those two quantities together. That's what that's what the superposition theorem in circuit says. So first, you pick either a voltage source or current source. <clears throat> excuse me to zero it. What I mean by zero it is I mean a voltage source becomes a short because voltage does not drop between a short circuit, and then a current source you open it because current can't flow in an open circuit. So it's almost like two little processes rather than one really big one. It's like breaking it apart. So let's look at an example. Use the superposition principle to find I0 and V0 in the circuit shown below. So let's go ahead and resize this. That was bad. 
Let's see, do that again. Like this. Let me go ahead and get rid of this. So we wish to solve. Oh, that's not good. We wish to solve for. Here, I'll just do this. We wish to solve for i0 and v0 using super position. So how are we gonna do that? Well, first we have to redraw the circuit by zeroing one of the sources. So I'll go ahead and zero the voltage source, which basically it would take the circuit and make it, or um, it would take this voltage source and make it a short basically. So it would look instead of this here, we'd have a short and then I'll evaluate the circuit like this with the current source. So we can use either or um, any kind of technique you'd like. I like to use null analysis. So this is VA, I'll just label VA, VB. So I'll write some KCL. First I need the KCL at VA, which is gonna be, this is I1. I should say this is I2. That's I0, and this is four I0. Let's say this current here is I3. So KCL at VA is gonna be current going in, which is I1 equals current going out. So that's I2 plus I0. And so rewriting this, I1 is six amps because there's six amps flowing into here. So that's gonna be six equals I2, oh, I need to pick my ground, sorry. It should always be first. <laughs> so that's gonna be I2 is VA minus zero divided by 40 ohms. That's I2. I3, oh, sorry, I0, sorry. That's gonna be VA minus VB divided by 10. That's gonna be equation one. Now the other equation, I just have one more uh, node. So I need the KCL at VB, which is gonna be current going in, I0 plus four I0 plus I3 equals zero. And then I0 is VA minus VB by 10 plus if I know the current flowing into there from this this that's just going to be 4 times I0 and I0 is VA minus VB by by 10 plus I3 which is 0 because it's going in this way 0 minus VB divided by 20 that's equation number 3 and then you solve those, and then you get, then you're gonna get from those, so let's call it part one, we solved for VA and VB. And once you get VA and VB, you can solve for I0, but it's not quite done yet, because we also need to evaluate this circuit by zeroing the current source. And then we have to look at it from there and then sum up those quantities. So if I remember correctly, this was a, uh, I can't really remember. Let's just do this real quick. I probably should have written it. Oh, can only go back so far. Well, let's just say it was, I forgot, sorry, that's, that's really embarrassing. I'll say it was like, I think it was like negative 20 volts like this. Hopefully that's right. Something like this, I think it was 20. We'll go with that. So from part one, we solve for VA and VB. Why well, didn't, but you can solve that linear uh, system of equations however you'd like. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, so the second part would be to zero this current source by making it an open circuit. And so you realize when we make this current source an open circuit, that just deletes this whole part of the circuit, but we'll still have this resistor here. So what we're doing is, 
We're just going to take this whole chunk of the circuit and then it's non-existent. So these branches are gone too. Now we need to evaluate the circuit using this configuration. And I'll go ahead and use null analysis again. So this node is going to be negative 20. Um, I guess I'll start with VA. I2 is going here. Well, now, or no, actually now we just have one node. And we should just have one equation. We just have one unknown VB. So I'll write the KCL at VB, which is going to be I0, or sorry, they're all going into the node, so they're all going to add some 0. I0 plus 4, I0 plus I3 equals 0. So I0 is going to be this voltage here, which is, it's going to be there's no voltage there, there's going to be no voltage drop there. So 0 minus VB over 10 plus 4 I0, which is 0 minus VB divided by 10 plus I3, which is negative 20 minus VB divided by 20. And then this is just going to be equation number one. We just need to solve for VB. And then what we need to do now is now that we have this VB, this is going to become VA plus VB plus VB. Because this is part one. And then this is part two. We have to add these two parts together. And then you can solve for that voltage, which is going to be VA minus VB. And VB is just 2VB, so that's going to be a number. So yeah, all you need to do is, that's how you do superposition. And then, honestly, the part that takes the longest would be solving these system of equations. It's just a lot of algebra and it's really tedious. But yeah, that's how you do the superposition principle. So lastly, we're going to go over operational amplifiers. Which, so what they are, they're like analog computers because they compute, they can add, subtract, they can even do complex math um, operations like differentiation, integration, also logarithm and exponentiation, but yeah. But basically the um, basics of them is they're a three terminal circuit element and they can produce a gain, which in other words, they're an active element. So the golden rules of an op amp, they have some golden rules is that no current can flow into either input terminal. What I mean is, so the op amp looks like this. It has two inputs, namely the inverting terminal and the non-inverting. So we all know the minus is the non-inverting, or sorry, the minus is the inverting and the plus is the non-inverting. So let's just say this is V minus, and this is V plus, just staying consistent with these signs. The voltage across these two terminals at all points is always zero. Therefore, the current flowing into the op amp is zero. So I just drew those currents I1 and I2. They're both going to be zero amps. And then V minus is going to be zero, which equals V plus. Therefore, V plus minus V minus is also equal to zero. So these are the golden rules for an op amp. I'm not going to go into too much like why it's like that. It's just how it is um, to practically um, model these devices. But that's the golden rules in an op amp. But if you're wondering how it produces gain, what's not shown are these power terminals um, that power the op amp. So current can flow from in and out of the term or the output terminal of the op amp. And practically speaking, it goes through these power terminals of the op amp. So it needs to be powered in order to produce gain. So let's go over an example. For the example, we'll just derive the um, general equation for a basic inverting uh, op amp configuration. 
that produces gain. So you have to provide something called negative feedback, which is basically an impedance that is fed from the output back into the input. I'm not gonna, gonna go into too much detail like why you do that, but it's just a method of producing gain. This is ground. Let's draw this as VN, this potential here. This potential is connected to ground. And then this potential here would be V out. And then this residual call R in, which is this input resistor, and then RF for R feedback. So using the golden rules, the current flowing into these two terminals is zero. Zero. But we know that current can flow this way and this way. So I'll call this one I1 and this one over here I2. And I'll write the KCL at this node VA. So KCL at VA. Okay, so using KCL and the golden rules, you have to consider both of them. Since current can't flow into the op amp, this really isn't a node because this I1 will just flow like this and this I2 will flow like this. It can't go into the op amp. Therefore, VA is going to be a potential of zero. Hope that makes sense. But right in the KCL, that just means I1 is negative I2. In other words, I1 plus I2 equals zero. And then now using nodal analysis, I need to rewrite these currents in terms of voltage. So I1 is going to be Vn minus Va divided by Rn. Vn minus Va divided by Rn. And I2 is going to be V out minus Va divided by Rf. Divided by R feedback. And I wrote those using null analysis and the fact that current can't flow into the input terminals of the op amp, but it can flow. So it can only flow like as these arrows shown. So I'll just trace my cursor to make sure it makes sense. So it's flowing up through here, through this resistor, down here, and this way. And then I1's flowing the opposite way of that same track. So using that fact, we know VA has potential of zero because current can't flow into the op amp. So VA is zero. So then our new equation is VN over RN is equal to V out over RF. And then typically you want to solve for your output voltage because you want to know what your output is. So V out is simply going to be, oh sorry, this equals zero. I, I skipped a step, sorry. I subtracted this part from both sides. So that's gonna go here. So I need a negative sign here. Sorry about that, I still just went a little too far ahead of myself. So yeah, all I did here was subtract V out over RF on both sides. So I get this new equation here. So that means V out is gonna be negative, if I do some algebra, negative RF over RN times Vn. And this is what you call your um, somewhat of like a transfer function or your V out to Vn relationship. Uh, similarly to what we saw in the voltage divider and current divider, that your output to your input. And why you do this, if you think about it, if you take every possible output value and divide by your input value, you'll get a good understanding of how your circuit will react given this equation here. So this is the so-called transfer function of the circuit. In other words, it produces gain. As you can see, uh, this one you could produce a gain larger than one, unlike the uh, current divider and voltage divider, because in the denominator you have a sum of the impedances. This one, we have RF divided by RN. You can simply just make RF greater than RN and you'll multiply that number by Vn. You see this number here is simply a number that's multiplying Vn, which is also called the gain. So that's it for op amps. I think that wraps up our review. 
we just went over some basics and then Kirchhoff's laws and then we talked about resistor networks and then some op amps. So I hope that was useful or helpful for anyone watching. Thanks.